What's going on, y'all? So how do promoters make money on shows? Is it only from ticket sales? Or are there other ways that promoters can make money? And actually, a little preview, if ticket sales is the only way you make money as a promoter, stop promoting shows now, right? They, you have to have other ways to make money as a promoter if you want to survive. In the settlement for episode one, we showed a loss for a show that was almost sold out. So if a show's almost sold out, shouldn't promoters be making money? A little tip for the artist there, right? Make sure you're always looking at your settlements, look at all the expenses, look at everything. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a look at how promoters make money. This is ancillary revenue. Live the life you love. All right, so let's take a quick look again at the settlement sheet from episode one, right? Here we're looking at a show. It's almost sold out. You have 52 tickets left available. They are quite a bit of comps. There's 108 comps. We sold 4,605 tickets, and the gross is a little over 200,000, right? Here, we broke down the expenses and what came out actual. So these are budgeted expenses. Here are actual expenses. Um, here we bring down the gross revenue, take out the facility fee, take out the sales tax, leaves us with 177,000, expenses were 109, and leaves a net for the show of 67,000, and a guarantee for the headliner was 80,000. So we're, if you come down here, we're showing a loss of $12,289.76 for the promoter, right? So, as I mentioned, if ticket sales are the only way you're making money as a promoter, you're, you're playing a dangerous game. There's got to be other revenue streams to survive, especially with artists taking a lion's share of, of the revenue, right? Um, so here, you know, the artists are getting $80,000 plus $15,000 for support, and they're getting $12,500 in production. So they're about half of the expenses are related, directly related to, like, quote, unquote, the guarantee or the, the risk on the show um, when it comes to of payments Payment. towards the risk of the show in terms of payments to the artist. So let's take a look at what other revenue promoters could potentially make. So every settlement has an artist settlement and there's always an internal settlement. The internal settlement is how the promoter actually performed, how they actually did for the show. Artists have the same thing. They have an internal settlement too, right? Where they do break down the math, where they have all their merch revenue, they put in the expenses for, uh, for their tour and everything. And that's where they kind of figure out uh, how much money they're going to make in the show. So everyone has an internal settlement. Uh, so it's not like something hidden or shady or anything. So we're going to come over here on our internal settlement. Basically, everything's the same. Ticket sales are the same. Expenses are the same. Uh, facility fees, sales tax, all the same, right? So we're going to come down here on promoter settlement. What did they actually make on the show, right? So I said what's, what was left over was $67,710 or 67 thousand seven hundred ten dollars uh and 24 cents so the promoter lost twelve thousand two eighty nine point seven six now what potential ancillary revenue is there um so let's take a look at the facility fee the facility fee is three dollars right so that's thirteen thousand eight hundred and fifteen sometimes there are scenarios and again there's no one size fits all um every venue can have different deals with different promoters Every promoter that who works, let's say they work with 20 different venues across a region, uh, they could have 20 different deals with each venue, right? So their deal is not the same with each venue. Some venues they're going to get ancillary revenues and other venues they might get absolutely nothing. So the deals are always different. Um, so here, facility fee is 13815 right? There is potential ancillary revenue here in the facility fee. Uh, so let's say we split the facility fee, right? With the venue, or the promoter and the venue split the facility fee. So we have 13,815 in, in facility fee revenue. If we divide that by two, that's $6,907.50 that is being split. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna enter in 6,907.50. Well, look at that. Promoter currently is only losing $5,300. Is there other money hidden anywhere? So, and facility fee, a lot of venues will keep the facility fee because to, to help maintain their venue. Um, but some venues don't even charge facility fees when they ch do shows directly with, uh, with agents. So 
they, they may not even know what that that's something that you could put in to your expenses, right? So every venue has the right to put a facility fee in, but not every venue has it. And sometimes promoters can still put in a facility fee and then they split that with the venue. So let's take a look at rebates. So these are ticket rebates. So I just pulled up Joe Rogan, one of my favorite comedians and favorite podcasters. I pulled up two different shows. So let me show you guys something real quick. Um, so I kind of waited too long to buy this ticket. So you go through the process real fast again of buying a ticket. All right, so we're looking at two different Joe Rogan shows, one in Philadelphia and the other one in Orlando, right? The one in Philadelphia, so let's look at, take a look at the, the breakdown. The ticket price was $59.50, and then there's a service fee of $16.65. So remember that $16.65, that service fee. And then we're going to look at uh, another Joe Rogan show. This one is in Orlando. And if you take a look here, the ticket's actually $3 cheaper than, than the one in Philadelphia. And the service fee is more. The service fee is $17. 65 so it's a dollar more service fee for a three dollar ticket then there's also a three dollar facility fee now if you're a tour manager or an artist and you're settling a show make sure to always look at the breakdown of buying a ticket right always try to look at what buying a ticket to your show looks like and take a screenshot of this because if the promoter is on a settlement and has here a 56 dollar and 50 cent ticket and it's still charging you a $3 facility fee, that's a red flag. That is, could be an honest mistake someone made that's doing a settlement, but a lot of times that's a red flag, right? Make sure if the facility fee is being charged to the customer here, so I'm the customer trying to buy this ticket, facility fee is being charged to me, make sure that doesn't show up on your settlement. Also, order processing fee, $5, right? We don't know what this is. It's very vague. If I were a tour manager and I were, doing the settlement, I would challenge credit card fees because a lot of times the processing fee, that is what's covered in that processing fee. Look, just looked at two different tickets, right? For Joe Rogan, 1765 for the facility fee or service fee and 1665 for the service fee. That service fee that we, we as customers love to pay um, has a percentage that goes to the promoter. Um, so that's the promoter rebate on the facility fee. So really the promoter and let's say really the, the venue, right? Whoever has the ticketing deal. So I'd assume here these facilities have the ticketing deal. So they're the ones that are going to get kicked back from that facility fee. Um, and they're the ones that can actually manipulate that fee a little bit. If you're a live nation and you own Ticketmaster, some questions to ask here, right? Who gets a bigger cut? So like does the Amway center um, who has their own ticketing deal, uh, what is their cut on this ticket versus what Live Nation's cut is on this ticket? And is that why this Live Nation ticket is uh, has a lower facility fee for a more expensive ticket? Because they're getting a higher cut from this. So things to think about, things to ponder. Um, so let's go over here. Just for, for easy math, we sold 4,605 tickets. Let's go to our calculator. So just for easy math, we're going to put 4,605. And I'm going to multiply that by, let's call it five. $5 a ticket for, for a service fee. So promoter gets back $5 a ticket. We go back to our ancillary revenue, going into this rebates column, 23,000 uh, and $25. And look at that, the promoter is in the profit. Uh, even if you took out the cut from the facility fee, right? The promoter is still in the profit. So let's say the venue doesn't share the facility fee. Uh, let's say the venue keeps that. Sometimes what can happen is, the promoter gets what's called a promoter rebate. That is a fee that the venue will pay to the promoter for each ticket sold usually uh, for doing business with that venue, right? So let's say the promoter here gets a dollar per ticket sold uh, as a promoter rebate. Uh, so we sold 4,605 tickets. So let's say that's $4,605. And as a promoter, if you're going to a venue frequently and you're not getting a cut from ticket rebates or from, uh, from the facility fee, you should um, negotiate a promoter rebate, right? Uh, so let's look at F and B. F and B, sometimes promoters can get a cut from that. Uh, and that can be at a venue as little as a, as a club, like 300 person club. If you're doing enough shows there and you have a good relationship with that club, you can neg negotiate a percentage of uh, F and B revenue, right? So again, going back to this show, 
Uh, the actual show, what was a hip hop show? So I'm gonna use this, that as an example. Let's go back to our calculator. We sold 4,605 tickets. Now, how much does each person on average spend at the bar and on food? It differ differs for every genre. Uh, some genres, are, the audience will spend more. Some genres, the audience will, will spend less. And you can really kind of figure it out based on, on genre uh, or style of music. And if you've done enough shows, you kind of get an idea what those potential uh, F&B numbers will look like, right? So let's say 4,605 people. I'm going to say the average per person is $12. So that's $55,260. F and B revenue. And let's say the, the promoter has a really good relationship with the venue and let's say they get 10%. It can completely vary. Sometimes you can take out the cost of goods and then they split the, the F and B revenue, right? Depending on what type of facility it is. But let's just say here we're getting 10% to the promoter. So another $5,526. So let's put that in our sheet, come down here to F and B revenue. $5,526. So now the promoter is $20,000 in the profit on this show. Let's take a look at parking. So sometimes the promoter can get a cut from parking. Just for, for easy math, let's say that's a dollar per ticket. $4,605 in parking revenue. And then the last one, merch. You know, is it right for a promoter or a venue to take merch from, from the artist? I mean, absolutely, right? They're using their, their facility and they can definitely take merch from artists and, or cut from merch from artists and it happens all the time. And there's all different percentages for merch. As I mentioned in episode one, for, for soft goods, so your t-shirts, your hats, your hoodies, anything that's not recorded, venues or promoters can take anywhere from 10 to 30% of that. And then hard goods, anything that's recorded uh, or can be also be called hard or recorded goods, that will be your CDs, DVDs, books, those types of items, usually promoters will take anywhere from zero to 30%. Uh, and again, as I mentioned in the episode one, you should try to negotiate keeping all of your recorded goods. And some major promoters allow artists to keep all their recorded goods because if you're an artist that's on a major label and you're only getting a, a dollar per, uh, you know, or 10 cents to the dollar for, for an album and the promoter is taking 20% from the album, you are now negative 10%, 10 percent, right? So a negative a dollar for every $10 of music you sell. So you're basically paying the label to, to sell your music at shows. So try to not have the promoters take a cut from, from your recording goods, regardless if you have a label deal or not, or if you're independent, you should try to always negotiate 100% of your recorded goods. Now here I have like this little ancillary revenue calculator, right? Uh, and here I have my average bar and average merch. And the reason I put $12 for this hip hop show is because this was a venue that also had F and B, right? So food, food, uh, not just alcohol. But on average, and these numbers are from, these numbers are from at venue. That's a platform a lot of artists use to, to track their merch and um, keep good inventory and do their settlements and keep their, their books clean and organized. So. $3 per person on average for, for a hip hop show is according to uh, ad venue. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So back to our handy dandy calculator. We sold 4,605 tickets, right? Times $3. So the artist is making about 13,815 in, in uh, merch. So let's say, I'm gonna take out the um, sales tax from here. So the sales tax for this venue. So when coming here, I'm gonna divide by one point 065. And the reason I'm dividing is because that gross number already includes the sales tax, right? Because it's inclusive. If you're adding it on top, then you would multiply. So it becomes the inverse. So the artist makes 12,971 net in merch uh, after sales tax. And let's just for easy numbers and easy math, let's say that is all soft goods and the venue is going to venue is going to take 20% of that. So the venue is going to do $2,594 on uh, merch commissions. Now, what happens with that money? Does the venue keep it or does that go to the promoter? Let's say they split it with the promoter since the promoter brought the show to them. And that's 1,297 to the promoter and 18 cents, right? But um, sometimes, a lot of times on merch, they just round these numbers down. So let's go back to our sheet. And we're going to put in here $1,297 
and now the promoter on a show where on the artist settlement, they showed they're losing $12,289. Uh, they're actually walking out with $26,768. So a show that almost sold out, that looked like a loss on paper, uh, the promoter actually did make money on this show. If you're the promoter and you're putting in offers or you're the venue and you're putting in offers, are you okay with showing a loss on a show that's almost sold out? I think that's not a good strategy. You shouldn't, it's like showing your cards, right? You should always put in deals where you show you can make a profit if the show sales out. If you're showing a loss at a sellout, you're basically saying, it's okay if I lose money because I have other ways I can make money. So I'm not really too concerned about losing money on the show. Your offer should always reflect a, a profit to be made for both the artist and for the venue or the promoter, whoever's putting the show in on just ticket sales alone. Both should be profitable on ticket sales. Now, one more quick thing. If we got rid of these comps, right? So let's say the show purely sold out. Sometimes the show, there's a, a no comp show. Let's say the show sold out every single ticket. Wow. In this scenario, the promoter is still showing a loss. So again, if you're showing a loss on a sold out show. I would never put in an offer that shows a loss on a sold out show. So these are some things to, to look at, right? If you're a manager looking at offers, if you're an agent looking at offers, if you're an artist looking at offers, uh, is the promoter showing a loss on a sellout? And if they are, why? Is there other potential revenue made? And as a promoter, it's okay to show a profit on a sold out show, right? It means everyone did well. The artist did well, the venue did well, the promoter did well. If the show sells out, everyone should be profitable. But that's not how the music industry up, operates, right? Now, is ancillary revenue the only revenue that promoters have? Or are there other ways that promoters can make money as well? We'll take a look at that in episode four. Next episode, in episode three, we're going to look at a drive-in concert, and we're going to break down the math for drive-in concert. Are drive-in concerts actually profitable? Can you make money on those? We will see you next episode. Until then, spread kindness and positivity in the world. And one day, go see shows, meet people, make stuff. Peace, my friends.